as you know, we're, we're going through the book of Galatians. Uh, the subject, uh, the title of our series is God's Grace for Saints. God's Grace for Saints. Uh, sometimes we um, believe that uh, it's only the, uh, the people who don't know Jesus that need the grace of, of God, but, but all of us need the grace of God. Uh, even after we've come to faith in Jesus, we need, we need God's grace. And so we want to talk today about um, the gospel of faith. Um, the gospel of faith, it's, it's good news, is it not? It's good news that um, God accepts you and God welcomes you and um, God approves of you because of your belief, not because of your behavior. Um, because if God was judging us by our behavior, even if he judged us on a curve, uh, we would not pass. Uh, we are very much imperfect people and uh, in need of, of grace, and uh, we often don't like that about our circumstances. We want to be self-sufficient, and we don't want to be needy. We don't want to be vulnerable, but we are. And uh, we need the mercy of God. We need the grace of God. We need the patience of God. We need a God who is slow to anger. Uh, we need a God who is compassionate and forgiving. This is the type of God we need, and it's the type of God we have, the only God who exists. And so uh, the gospel of faith, um, and our target today is that uh, together uh, we would continue to live by faith after our conversion. We're saved by faith, but we are to continue to live by faith, and that's what is really being upheld in, in Galatians chapter 3. Let's read the passage and talk about it a little bit. Uh, Galatians 3, verse 1, please hear God's word. O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith? just as Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Know then that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached a gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse, for it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law, for the righteous shall live by faith or the righteous by faith shall live. But the law is not of faith. Rather, the one who does them shall live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. So that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. The word of the Lord. Uh, through faith we receive. Through faith we are righteous. And through faith we are redeemed. You know, you know Galatians is one of the most emotional books that Paul ever wrote. Um, you remember in the very beginning of this, of this letter... Uh, Paul says, if anyone, if even we, or, or someone else, an angel from heaven even, should preach to you a gospel other than the one we preached, 
let him be eternally damned. And he says it twice. He's, he's pretty warm when he writes this letter. And, and at one point, you know, there, there were these Judaizers who were saying that you need to get circumcised. You need to obey the law of Moses, even the dietary law of Moses, at every point in order for God to actually welcome you. And uh, Paul says to these guys, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves, which is, you know, not your common language when you're talking about people in the church. Uh, but, but he's very emotional. And in this passage, uh, he says the same thing. Oh, foolish Galatians, you know, you, you fools. He's basically saying to them, how, how could you get this one wrong? Is what he's saying. He's, he's emotional. He's irate. He says, you know, someone has cast a spell on you. You've been bewitched. You know, it's not the cute bewitched like you used to watch with the fuzzy little nose and she makes stuff move across the room. Uh, uh, Paul, Paul is saying that um, someone has cast a spell on you, someone has deceived you, and it's none other than the devil working through some people uh, to deceive these people uh, to believe a false gospel. And, and Paul uh, is the one who discipled uh, these people. He's the one that led them to the Lord. And, and he says it, it was before your eyes. When, when Paul came, he proclaimed Jesus Christ crucified to these Gentiles. Uh, Jesus died on the cross for sinners. He died on the cross for rebels. He died for perverts. He died for people who have addictions. He died for people who have problems with lust and immorality and, and idolatry and, and people who are gossips and slanderers. He died for lowlifes. He died for me. He died for you. Uh, Jesus, Jesus died for us. And and Paul proclaimed the cross of Christ. He, he proclaimed the blood of Jesus. He proclaimed the righteousness of Christ. He proclaimed the perfections of Christ. He proclaimed how he lived a perfect life to, to hand you a record of, of obedience. And you could take your record of disobedience and hand it back to God. And, and Jesus died for all of your sins and all of your rebellion. And, and Paul placarded that. It was like a billboard. It was like a neon light. He, he proclaimed this truth to these people and they soaked it up. They believed it. And when they believed it at that very moment, they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. God changed them. They became a brand new creation simply because the word of the Lord came to them. The promise of the cross came to them and they believed that God did this for them. They believed God loved them that much, that God was that gracious and merciful. They accepted it. They took it into their own heart. They believed it. And they got the Holy Spirit. Sometimes people say you've got to get saved and then you get the Holy Spirit later. That's a lie. You're born again of the Spirit. The way we, we can even believe in God is by the power of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness. The word is pistis, faith. It comes from the Spirit. We're born of the Spirit, John 3. The Spirit is the one who, who changed our hearts from the beginning and enabled us to embrace Jesus Christ. And Paul says, you, you got the Spirit of God when you heard the message. You didn't work for him. You got him by simply believing the word of the Lord about Jesus Christ that came to you. Faith comes from hearing the message about Jesus Christ crucified. When the gospel is proclaimed, the spirit of God works and he works in the heart of the sinner and saves them. You became a sanctuary of God. Sometimes we, we, we say that this is the sanctuary of God. It is not the sanctuary of God. You know, the sanctuary of God does not leak. And um, the sanctuary of God does not have all of these uh, issues. Um, this is a building. It's a building dedicated to the work of the Lord. And it, it should be respected because of that. But, but you are the sanctuary of God. You, you, you people who believe in Jesus, God lives inside of you. You are where God dwells. Everywhere you go, God goes. Isn't that right? 
And uh, you are the sanctuary of God. And, and you became the sanctuary of God simply by believing the word of the Lord that came to you. That there's a God of love in heaven who wants to bless you with salvation, with forgiveness. He wants to bring you into his family. And the way he does that is by dealing with your sin in the person of his son, sacrificed on a cross. And because of that, you trusted in that message. You believed in it. You received it. You admitted your sin. You said, I need Jesus. And you became the sanctuary of God, just like that. And Paul says, you know, did you receive the Spirit by works of the law? No, you didn't work for that. You trusted. It was by faith. It's good news that you just had to believe. You didn't have to behave. And not only that, but, but the Spirit, it says, uh, he says that the Spirit, he... He, he works inside of us. Uh, are you so foolish having begun by the Spirit? Are you now being perfected by the flesh? When you became a believer, you received the Spirit of God. He changed your life. You became a brand new creation. And, at, and, and, and you do not at that point say, thanks for that. You can go to somebody else now. I got it from here. You know, it doesn't work that way. Uh, the Spirit of God stays with you until you see Jesus Christ. He seals you until the day of redemption. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. It doesn't make a difference whether you feel him. You know, I don't know exactly what his geographical location is inside of your body. If, if you go to a surgeon or, or go to get an x-ray, it's not like you can see him. But, but he's inside of you. And the evidence that he's inside of you is because you once were guilty about your sin. You once were overcome that you were a transgressor and a rebel. And, and you confessed your sin to God. And you believed in Jesus Christ and your guilt disappeared at that moment. And it, it sometimes comes back and harasses your conscience. But, but when that happens, you, you go back to the cross of Christ. You remind yourself of the blood that was shed, of the resurrection that took place. And your heart is warmed all over again to Jesus Christ and the gospel. Um, isn't it true in your life, if, if, you, if you know Jesus, uh, there was a time in which you, you just loved gossip. But now you're, you don't love it as much. Uh, there was a time when, you, when people did you wrong, you were bitter, you were mad, you wanted to kill someone, but, but now you're, you're able to forgive. You're able to let it go. Um, you know, that, that's something the Holy Spirit has done. Um, you've got love. You've got joy like you never had joy before. You've got peace like a river. You've got the ability to be patient and to be kind even with people who, who don't think you're cool. Right? Uh, you, you're faithful like you weren't faithful before. You, you've got a measure of self-control that you didn't have before. Uh, this is the evidence that God is inside of you, working out the character of Christ within you. And, and you, you don't get perfected by human effort. You don't get perfected by sweating and laboring and toiling. You, you get perfected by, by reminding yourself of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus died for you. He rose again. You never graduate from that reality. And you go back to that reality. And because of that love of Jesus Christ, because he loved you and gave himself up for you, you're able, in view of Jesus, because of his mercies, because of his grace, because of his love, the love of Christ compels me. That's what Paul said. It's the love of Christ, his love for me, his everlasting love for me. It compels me to no longer live for myself but to live for the one who died and was raised again on my behalf. It's the love of God for you. We love because God first loves us. And um, it's, it's all by faith. You, 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 you trust the message by faith. And by faith, Jesus says, all of those who are sanctified by faith in me. You get sanctified by faith. When you, when you behold the grace of God and the mercy of God revealed in Jesus Christ, and, and you, what do you do with that? At Romans chapter 12, in view of the mercies of God, you offer your body as a sacrifice alive to God now, not to sin. 
holy to God, acceptable to God. This is the way you do worship. Because of the mercies of God, you don't conform to the world, but you offer all of the members of your body to righteousness, to obedience. And when you do that, the Bible says, the Spirit uh, continues the process of sanctification in your life. You read about it in Romans 6.19. You used to offer your, your members as slaves to unrighteousness, leading to increased lawlessness. But now you offer your members to righteousness, leading to sanctification. And you, you make that offering because of the offering that Jesus made. It's, it's quite a simple process to grasp mentally, but it's a, it's a bear sometimes to work it out truthfully, practically. But uh, the, the, the law of God is not a burden for those who meditate on the mercy of God. It's the mercy of God that leads you to love God. If you, if you try any other route, you won't get there. You only get frustrated. Um, you'll get mad. Um, it's the mercy of God. That's the way. We receive by faith. Um, notice what he says in verse 6 of chapter 3. It's just as Abraham believed. You receive from God the exact same way Abraham received. There's no difference. You, you read, read it back in, in Genesis 15, 4. The word of the Lord came to Abraham. I'll make your seed as much as the, sky, uh, much as the stars in the sky. Abraham believed, and it was counted to him as righteousness. God made a promise. Abraham believed it. He's righteous immediately, just like that. Very simple. And uh, it's the same for us. It's exactly the same for us. God counts you righteous, just as righteous, just as sinless as Jesus Christ, simply by believing the word of the Lord that comes to you, that Jesus died for sinners, rose again to give you brand new life. I don't know about you, but I want to see Jesus one day. And um, I'll talk about it a little bit later, but I really want to see him one day. Um, so that's, uh, we receive through faith. Through faith, we receive. Uh, through faith, we are righteous. Verses 7 through, through 9. Um, by believing in Jesus Christ, uh, you're a son of Abraham. You don't have to be Jewish to be in. You know that? You know, Abraham was an idol worshiper. It says it in Joshua 24, I believe. That he and his father, Terah, they worshipped idols. How many of you worship idols? See, Abraham was a pretty bad guy. But because he believed the word of the Lord that came to him, righteous, just like that. Just trusting in him. Um... You're a son of Abraham, it says, by faith. The scripture foresaw that God was going to justify you. You all are, I'm, you, I am, you are, unless someone here is, you know, ethnically Jewish. Uh, all of you are Gentiles. All of us are Gentiles. And the Bible says that in the Old Testament, God predicted that the way he was going to get the Gentiles to be a part of his family, it was through faith. And so God proclaimed the gospel to Abraham. The gospel is good news but it's not new news. It's old news. In you, all nations shall be blessed. That's what he told him back in Genesis 12. I'll bless every nation through you. I'll bless every nation. Look at verse 9. Those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Everyone who believes the way Abraham believed will be blessed the way Abraham was blessed. And uh, the blessing that's being talked about, of course, is uh, found in Romans chapter 4. I believe it's in the uh, preparation in your bulletin. In Romans chapter 4, it says that, um, um, What then shall we say that our, was gained by our father Abraham uh, according to the flesh? If Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. But to the one who does not work, listen to this, but believes in the one who justifies the ungodly. Justifies the ungodly. See, there's an admission. I'm a sinner. I'm in need. They're the ones who get justified. Remember the Pharisee and the publican? They went to pray, and Pharisee prayed about how great a guy he was and how all of the stuff he did and God wasn't listening to that prayer. He turned him off. 
And there was a publican, a lowlife, a scum of the earth. Everybody looked down on the tax collectors. They still do, unfortunately. Um, but this guy came, right, and he, he prayed and, and said um, he wouldn't even lift his head. He was so ashamed of himself. And he said, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus says, that man went down exalt, justified. Because whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. And so you see that it's in Romans chapter 4, it says that God is the one who justifies the ungodly. And God counts a righteousness to them apart from works. Uh, here's, the right, here's the blessing that's talked about in Galatians chapter 3, verse 7 through 9. It's the blessing listed in, in Romans chapter 4, 7 and 8. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. Now this is obviously a quotation from Psalm 32, where David is recounting the fact that, you know, there was a time when he was silent about his sin. When you're silent about your sin, it's suicidal. It's fatal. Don't be silent about your sin. Acknowledge it. Make it known to God. Acknowledge it and uncover it. Don't try to hide stuff from God. You can't anyway. God already knows what you did. When you, when you and I come and confess sin, uh, we're not informing God. We're not giving God an FYI. He knows the issues already. But He wants us to acknowledge those, those things, to acknowledge our sin, to, to, to uncover our iniquity, to confess our rebellion to God. The Bible says this, the moment we do that, we're forgiven. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Do you ever get guilty? I mean, I get guilty sometimes. You do stuff and you know you shouldn't do it and you get guilty. And what do you do with that? You go back to God. You go back to the cross. Sometimes in our pride and self-righteousness, we want to believe better about ourselves. Well, that really wasn't, I couldn't have done that. I mean, how on earth could I have done that? And we don't, we don't, we don't confess. And we get stressed. We can't get to sleep and our life is a mess. And what you need to do is go back to God and, and fess up. You know, I mean, when David wrote Psalm 32, he was a believer. He wasn't being saved. He already was saved. But, 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 but believers need the grace of God. The Bible says if you confess your sins, you confess your faults, God is faithful. He is righteous. He will forgive you your sins. He will purify you from all of your unrighteousness. And so uh, we go back. We acknowledge. Don't be silent about sin. Confess it. And, and God promises, he promises forgiveness. Look at Romans chapter, chapter 5. Uh, Romans chapter 5 um, that was read uh, in your hearing. Um, it says, you know, there are certain blessings that we have for those who are justified. You have peace with God. You've got access to God. You've got joy and you've got hope and you've got the love of God uh, poured out in your heart. All of these uh, blessings come... Uh, by being declared just as righteous and just as sinless as Jesus Christ, simply by believing the word of the Lord that comes to you in the gospel. Um, we're blessed uh, through faith. We are righteous uh, through faith. Um, God accepts us. Um, and through faith we receive. And lastly, through faith we are redeemed. Uh, Paul gets, he, you know, he, he, he's drilling home this reality that it's by faith that we receive from God. It's by faith that we're, we're, we're declared righteous by God because he wants to drill into our thinking. He wants to get out of our thought processes this whole idea of human effort to win God's approval and favor. And you think about your own life, um, how often it's human effort that gets you the grade, right? It's human effort often that gets you the job. It's human effort that gets you the name that uh, everybody says, oh, Dr. So-and-so or this and that. And, and, and people know your name and you get respect. You get, you get uh, better stuff, it seems, when you put a lot of effort and you depend on yourself. And Everything in our culture tells us it's up to you. It's up to how well you do. And uh, I'm here to tell you it's, it's really not about that. That's not where it's at. Where it's really at is it's up to, where, it's up to God. 
You know, God is going to provide your needs. He will provide every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God is going to do that for you. Uh, the Bible says the way he goes about doing that is when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. When, when God is first, when Christ is first, when, 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 when the priority in your life is really about, I want a life subject to Jesus Christ. I want a life for Jesus. I want to live my life for Christ. I don't want to live my life for myself or my wants or my desires. I don't want to write the rules. I want God, he's already written the rules, I want God to lead my life. It's, it's that type of person that God has made a promise to you. God who cannot lie, I will provide everything you need according to my riches and glory in Christ Jesus. When God is first, your bubble won't burst. You know that? Um, when you seek the best, you're guaranteed the rest. Did you know that? It's true. When you put Jesus first and his righteousness first, everything else comes right your way. But you try to put other stuff before God and, and um, you know you should be reading your Bible. You know you should be praying. You should probably be at prayer meeting. Not all of you because some of you are working, but some of you know you're sitting at home watching the tube and you should be praying and should be calling on the name of the Lord. But you know, it's, you know, it's inconvenient. I got to get up. I got to start my car. It's a waste of gas. And I got to get to church. I could get in an accident. That would be terrible. And all these things that could happen and all these things are rattling around in your head instead of just going and praying and being blessed. Amen. Anyway. Um, but you know, you, you've got a test tomorrow, you've got to study, uh, you know, you've got to get the grade, you've got to get the A, or people are not going to be pleased, and, and all of these things start coming into your mind, and, and, and what you, and, but, but I can't read the Bible now, I, I don't have time to pray, Lord, even though Christ has all of the wisdom and all of the knowledge in every place, and if you just go to him, you know, I, you know I'm a witness, you know, I, I, some, of my, my, some of my report cards read Fifi, you know, um, I was older than some of the grades I got. You know what I'm saying? And uh, this is back in sixth and seventh grade, folks. You know, um, and so you, so, you know, I don't, you know, at the point, you know, yeah, it was hard. It was difficult. You know, I had to sit down and have a chit chat with mom and dad. What's wrong with you? Is there something wrong? You can't learn or something like that. You know, and I was like, no, I just didn't study. You know, I just didn't. And at that point, I was doing stuff that was just dumb. But, but you, know, at, you know, when you get to, to seminary or what, you know, whatever, higher education, and, and you, you got a test tomorrow, you got a Greek test, and, um, or you got a Hebrew test, and I'm going to spend time in, in the Word with God. You know, the, I can, I've got plenty of Hebrew tests waiting for me. But, but this is a moment I have with God. God is more important than all the tests, and um, I still graduated. Amen. Amen. That's right. Praise the Lord. Um, and see, it wasn't my effort. It was God who, who got me through. I, I, I can recall having oral examinations, and I, I had to read my Bible. I didn't have time to look at all the stuff that the, the professor gave me. And I prayed to God. I said, Lord, I don't want him to ask me anything but the stuff I study. Because I'm putting you first. And you know what? God did that thing. He asked me all the questions on the stuff I studied, the stuff I didn't study. He didn't even ask me. And I left that place. I was like, yeah, that's right. Jesus did that thing. All right. I'm getting a little ghetto up here, but that's okay. Um, look, folks, through faith we are redeemed. Last point. Through faith we are redeemed. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. All who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. Cursed is everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law to do them. Nobody can do every single thing God tells them to do. And if we try to win God's approval by our obedience, if we try to make it in his family by our obedience, we will always be under the curse. Um, the reality is, is that, you know, we live in a culture that says believe in yourself. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 28, 26, a fool, a fool trusts in his own mind. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. He will direct your paths. Um, the law is antithetical to faith because what the works of the law say is it's, it's my achievement. But what the gospel says, it's Christ's achievement. What the law says is it's what I did. The gospel says it's what Christ did. The law is all about what I do for my pride and for my boast. And the gospel is about what Christ has done and God has done through him for his own glory and his own praise. 
And that's the way to live life. We don't live life giving praise to ourselves or boasting in ourselves. We do it for God. We do it for the worship of God and the praise of God. Because, because the beauty of the gospel is that Jesus Christ is the one who got up on a cross and said to God, curse me and bless them. And that's the gospel. That Jesus said, curse me and bless them, all of them who believe. No matter what they've done, no matter where they've been, no matter where they're from, no matter what birth canal they came through, if they trust in the gospel, bless them with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in me. That's what Christ says to everyone who believes. It's not by our effort. It's by his effort. It's not by our achievement. It's by his achievement. It's not by our works. It's by his works. It's not by anything that we do. It's by what Christ has done. And the Bible says when, when you trust, when you believe, it says, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. Jesus took your curse. He took your punishment. He took all of your crimes upon himself. And he said, strike me down. Pour out your wrath on me. Punish their sin in my person, is what Jesus said. And let them go free. That's an amazing gospel. That's an amazing message that God would accept you. You don't do a thing. Even the faith by which you believe is a gift given to you by God. The operation of the Holy Spirit, putting it in your heart to accept Him. It's amazing. And the Bible says it's through that same blessing that you receive the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God who lives in you and creates inside of you. The Spirit of God prevents you from gratifying your flesh. And the Spirit of God produces in you the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and things like this. And the way these things come is when you remember the gospel and because of the gospel, you offer yourself to God obediently, whether you feel like it or not, and the Spirit of God begins to develop the character of Christ in your life. It's the gospel of faith. We're sanctified by faith. We're redeemed by faith. We receive by faith. We're righteous by faith. Praise the Lord. Let's pray.